Welcome back. This is Steel Rise and Shine, and we're beaming live from Uyo, the capital city of Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Several, several conversations have already gone on, and you can catch up on all that following us across all the social media platforms. At this time, we'll be going into a focus conversation, and the Labour Party, since after the announcement of the presidential and the gubernatorial election result, has been thrown into an a rather unexpected bout of leadership problems and just when we thought that that was going to be given a rest new things are still arising to have the conversation looking into the deepening leadership crisis in the labor party we have joining us virtually this morning um obong engineer udo kingsley akban mnse member national mobilization directorate labor party and member Inter-Party Affairs Committee will be that e presidential campaign council. Good to have you on the show this morning, Kingsley. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, is it Kano or Abuja? What's your location this morning? Abuja. Abuja is your location, okay? Because I was wondering, how is Abuja this morning? You look bright and um, very alive. Oh, Abuja is calm. Uh, the weather here is quite uh, bright and uh, it's much cloudy. Okay. Cool. Okay, so let's um, get into the main conversation now. Uh, Labour Party, after the um, elections, you know, the presidential elections, uh, seemed to be uh, like the main opposition party. A lot of Nigerians have said that Labour Party has become the major opposition party coming like a third force and even overshadowing the People's Democratic Party. But it seems that uh, there's just a whole lot of problems arising in your party as we speak. The leadership torso, we have Julius Abure, who was the national chairman at a time. And then we had the group that said, oh, he's, he was uh, in, you know involved in anti-party. He was set aside by the court. And then we had um, Lamidia Papa also come uh you know to take over the mantle of leadership in the labor party but it seems that there's still a lot of uh, issues in the labor party uh, i think i would like you to just put us in the know of exactly what is happening and uh, you know the state of things as it is all right thank you for this uh, opportunity given to me um uh, basically we all know that uh, the labor party has uh, become a beautiful bride and uh, it's expected that uh, you see a lot of students coming around flocking around with the bride and the uh, uh, lower party as you target to be a touch force it's not a touch force labor party is the party to beat in any elections and that is why uh, what you see happening within the party uh, is expected you know, and uh, talking about the leadership uh, tells me, I, 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 I for one will not say that the leadership tells me. Uh, basically, there, there are some infractions uh, being uh, done uh, wrongly by the national chairman, of which uh, the Court of Competent Jurisdiction, FCT High Court, um, gave an uh, uh, asking him to stop parading himself alongside uh, three audits the national uh, secretary, the national Planning secretary, and the national treasurer of the party to stop parading themselves as national officers pending the case before the courts. Mm. And that uh, restraining order was done. And knowing fully well, we have uh, three deputy national chairmen two from the south and one from the north. And uh, Alaji Lamidi Bashiru, a papa who happens to be the most senior among the three. Uh, of course, you don't expect a factory to be uh, in, in, in such a, an office where the court are giving the restraining order. So a papa had to come in and uh, oversee the affairs of the party pending the mention of the case in court. 
Okay, then. Um, something else that, you know, is um, a matter of concern is yeah. when we are looking at um, intra-party rivalry. Mm -hmm. Is it not something that is meant to be addressed by the, you know, NWC and the Helms people at the Labour Party? Why was the case, uh, uh, you know, about Abure and the other three sorted out by the court? Why was it an issue that a court of jurisdiction had to address and not the Labour Party family as it were? Because it looks like, re remember, I think there was two weeks ago, we had the NLC actually storm um, Abuja the headquarter where you have the Labour Party headquarter and insisting that they wanted Abure to you know resume we his activities yeah. as party chair and when you're also saying that you know um, Abure's um, activities were questioned by the court what are these activities that you know um, the court saw it and deemed fit that they should stop parading themselves as national officers. But first of all, wasn't that an issue that was meant to be um, you know, sorted into a party? Yeah, that's the truth. Uh, you know, most times uh, when you have uh, issues like this, and uh, issues like this basically are meant to be resolved in house. But where it uh, has to do with an external person who is not a member of the NWC, you understand? Because uh, the travail being undergone by our national chairman, uh, by Mr. Julius Aburi, uh, has to do with uh, an individual who is not a member of the NWC. And uh, that individual resorts to take his matter to court. Uh, but we are finding ways to see internally how we can uh, address that matter. But the point is, uh, you know, people feast on uh, on issues like this, and they want to make it a very big issue and headline in the news. Mm. You know, and uh, what uh, the NLC president came to do was uh, a solidarity visit to Aburi, you know, contrary to the directive of the court. You know, but I think... Um, uh, in that same, uh, uh, in that same uh, society visit, I, I, I think he did make a statement that he will approach the courts to actually uh, get an interpretation of what uh, the orders, the two orders, the one in Benin and the one in FCT High Court, is actually talking about. So that at least let them throw more light on uh, these two orders of the courts. Because the one in Benin is saying uh, uh, restraining any court from um, suspending Aburi. And this other one in FCT is saying that uh, Aburi should stop parading himself. You understand? I wouldn't want to uh, go into the nitty gritty of the matter before the Honorable Justice, Hamza Muhazu. I wouldn't want to go there because that matter is already in court and I wouldn't want to discuss that, um, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. But we're trying to see how best uh, we can uh, resolve those issues out of court. Uh, of course, the last I joined it, which was on the 20th, uh, the National Secretary of NLC was there and uh, he was trying to talk to both parties to how they can best resolve these issues uh, out of court. I think that's the, the next I joined it is on the 12th of uh, May. So let's see how that goes. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah there's, um, there's a question I wanted to ask with regards to um that cannot skip my mind at all okay <laughs> that, that particular question has skipped me um we are looking at okay yes um so some of the postulations with regards to the in um, infractions that we're beginning to experience in the labor party especially when we say that you know the nlc um chair and the people that came to the headquarters had said i mean labor party is our brainchild it's our baby it's a party we want to defend its cause and we will not allow um, um, like we'd say in other in other quarters on scrupulous elements from other parties to begin to you know put confusion in our midst now there's been allegations and postulations that we are having people coming in from other parties just to be in an attempt to destabilize um what we've begun to see as a stabilized front of the labor party is this at this um inf inferences that you also tilt to at this time yeah, just like I said, um, there are these speculations, there are actually speculations that uh, uh, the man, Alaji uh, Lamidi, 
Bashiru Apapa is being uh, is being fronted by uh, some persons from the opposition party. Uh, but I will say for the truth that uh, our Papa is not being sponsored by anybody. I've actually sat with him. I've actually had conversations with him and uh, and his team. And I can tell you that uh, if you sit with the man called Lamidia Papa, you will know that uh, uh, of the truth, he only came to fill in that gap, that vacuum which by the pronouncement of the thoughts, you understand, would have created a vacuum. And being the, the second ranking, the uh, highest ranking member after the national chairman, mm -hmm. you understand, it is uh, his responsibility to come in and fill in that gap. And that's exactly what he's doing. Because after that time he came in, if he does not get by my if he has still to come in and perform his duty, as of that time, we would have had issues of uh, not able to fill in candidates for the three states that were about having elections in November, the gubernatorial elections in Kungi, in Boyesa, and in Muski. You understand? Because it was during that period that uh, they were supposed to carry out screening of uh, the candidate uh, of their aspirants and uh, conduct uh, the party primaries. You understand? So um, I think Apapa came in at a very good time. You know, just like I said, this issue is before the court, and uh, until the court uh, say otherwise, you understand, Akapapa is meant to act, pending when the court decides to lift his, uh, or back it that order uh, which he has initially um, uh, uh, instituted. Um, I want to tell people that uh, nobody is as infiltrated uh, the Labour Party, and if there were any such thing, Basically, is, uh, some of these governors, whom the elections are to be held in November, as I said, in Bayasa, in Imo State, and Kogi State, who sponsored candidates, or sorry, some persons to come and uh, purchase our nomination form. But as uh, during the screening, we were able to figure out such persons and uh, show them the exit door. door you understand? Because, uh, you know, these things happen. Political parties are. Uh, a sponsored candidate, even within your party, to come and obtain the nomination form. Mm. So that when it gets closer to the period of election, you see them stepping aside, that they cannot longer carry on to the uh, to the pools, you understand? And thereby making the party not to have a candidate for that election. So we were able to discover those uh, moves and uh, the important bridge of them during okay. the screening and in the primary. All right. I, I'm, I'm also very happy that, you know, you made mention of um, the Emo State um, Guba crisis that happened, you know, in Emo State, uh, two factions bringing out two different um, uh, gubernatorial candidates and conducting primaries, you know, yeah. along parallel yeah. lines. But um, another thing is, um, the question I'm going to be throwing at you this morning is, where has all of this leadership tussle, you know, uh, left the party as we speak we also see that lamidia papa at some point also was also alleged of have a plain anti-party and he was shown the, the door out but in a televised interview as well he said nobody can take him out of the party so maybe you just have to straighten up those things for us you know politicians are very they're very good people and very terrible people. You know, they, they always want to have their way in everything they do. You know, and the uh, Labour Party is not uh, the kind of party that uh, most of them have been, where mon money will sway. You know, here we look at uh, people who actually have uh, the principles of three C's, who have the competence, they have the capacity, you know, and uh, they have uh, um, the character. You know, so these are people who actually look out for. And uh, when we saw these characters in uh, these principles, in uh, some of these um, aspirants, as of then, now candidates, you know, we had to just do our homework and ensure that uh, we get uh, a more credible person that can hold the party flag in that state. 
talking about Imo State, um, we, we had issues in Imo State where um, two candidates in March. Uh, it based on these uh, issues that are being instituted by the judiciary, which has become a problem, you know. Um, restraining Aburi, you know, from parading himself, he had his own uh, team, which he actually set up to conduct these primaries. And when a papa came, he actually had his own team he set up to conduct uh, this primary. And that is where they were able to have that uh, issue of uh, um, two candidates in the state. But when, when, when we say the, the party is in crisis, to me, I would say the party is firm. The party is united. The party is uh, it's expected, as I said earlier, that such things are emanating, mm -hmm. and uh, it only can make the party more stronger. You know, and uh, you know it has happened in other parties, even when, even in PDP, in APC, to happen. You know, when Oshomola um, uh, was uh, asked by the courts to step aside. You know, even in uh, PDP. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, the national chairman was definitely uh, last month and asked to step aside. You know. So these things happen in political party. You only going to make us stronger because we're going to learn from our mistakes, and uh, that will help in uniting us. Uh, when, when is, a papa, okay, yeah. a papa is, Go ahead, sir. About a papa, a papa, as I said, a papa is uh, the uh, next to Aburi, being one of the oldest uh, man in the party, 21 years standing. You know, in the party, he has been a uh, state chairman in your state. Uh, he has been a, a vice, uh, national vice chairman, and, and now, now he's only acting because of uh, the restraining order given by the court. You understand? And uh, he's doing just fine. You know, he's not the sort of person who, who brags around or who is the one to be seen. You understand? All of the time. He's this kind of person that is calm. You know? So I haven't stayed with him for a couple of days. I, I can tell that uh, um, he's just fine. It's so, so a, as we speak now, telling anybody that he's the national chairman, he's just an acting, on acting capacity. Is he still? Is he still on acting capacity? Is he still on acting capacity? Because there are also allegations that he has been shown the way out because he's involved in anti-party. Well, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know that. Um, as of uh, Thursday, that was the last I joined it, being twentieth of uh, April. They were in court, and the court still uh, um, uh, restrained uh, the national chairman and the three others. So, and that matter has been adjourned to 12th of May. So, not until that order is vacated, you know, a papa will be acting because uh, there should not be a vacuum in our office. Okay. Okay. So, something else I'd, I'd like to find out is the fact that in terms of speculation, because this is a good avenue now to clear up certain speculations that are surrounding the Labour Party as a result of this leadership um, crisis, quote and unquote. Now, we know that the Labour Party has come off as highly dissatisfied with the um, process of the just concluded presidential election. And we know that the petition is already in court. Um, your principal, Peter Albi, and, you know, all of his constituents have moved to the court as was advised by the chairman of INEC. But then we are looking at the fact that speculations are saying these activities, these leadership tussles here and there, could this be an active attempt as, at distracting the party, at putting together the energy that is needed to, you know, head to court for the tribunal? Do you think this is going to be a distraction for the move to regain the stolen mandate? Um, if you know my prison well, His Excellency, uh, Mr. Peter Gregory B, is uh, a man who is firm, a man who is very determined, a man who is very focused, a man who would not allow himself to be distracted. You understand? Just like I said, this, uh, the process to reclaim our student mandate is on, and uh, we are on with that. Uh, we are not shaking, and we know that uh, they say the hope of the common man lies in the judiciary. So we want to believe that the honorable justices who are sitting 
at that panel in uh, in the tribunal, the court of appeal, who's that serve as the tribunal, we do justice in this case. You understand? And uh, those frivolities in bringing in technicalities will not go sway in this matter. And we're very sure and very determined and hopeful that our stolen mandate will be recovered in Rajasthan. So the party have been a uh, um, the second uh, um, uh, plaintiff in this matter is not distracted, it's not to start at all because our lawyers go to the court at the tribunal and ensure that uh, uh, justice is uh, served on this matter before the panel. Right. So we are not distracted. Okay, still on the match of uh, regaining stolen mandates and all of that. But let's come down a little bit to uh, something that happened some months ago. Of course, uh, uh, in the build-up to um, the off-season elections in Imo, Bayelsa and all the states that will be experiencing off-season election on the 11th of November, uh, we see that um, the Labour Party actually pegged its gubernatorial ticket for 25 million and then afterwards there was a review and it was slashed down to 15 million. Now I know that this came with a lot of criticism especially from the obedience movement because when we go back to in time to even when the uh, elections uh, started you know um, I think the party ticket was free of charge. There were people that you know just went free of charge for different positions but coming to see that oh finally the Labour Labour Party has built um, a little bit of structure and then we are having to pay uh, a whooping uh, 15 million naira for Guba tickets. What would you say was the reason for this change? I'll tell you that uh, our principal, Mr. His Excellency Mr. Peter Gregory, will be when he was in, uh, when he was in PDP. If you, if you can remember, the, the presidential uh, form was sold for 40 million. Why APC sold years for 100 million? If you can remember, if I recall. You know, in one of his interviews, he granted, he, he made a statement that, uh, that if he becomes uh, president of the Federal Republic, he will try to sit with the national the leadership of the party and see how best uh, this cost of uh, form, the election forms can be reduced. Because uh, you will be you will be creating a platform where young people will not be able to afford this money to acquire a nomination form. Mm. You understand? Or purchase a nomination form, thereby shutting the doors for the young people. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, this uh, not too young, the wrong bill was signed into law by His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari. And if that is anything to go by, you find out that uh, even after signing such a, uh, a bill into law, you know, encouraging the young people by the price tag on the mission form, they'll still be distanted and uh, deprived mm -hmm. from getting into the political space. So when they eventually came into the Labour Party, or before then they came into the Labour Party, you know, in in to enable Labour Party filling candidates for, into uh, political office, elective offices. You know, they actually. Oh, I think our um, network is on the way, but um, serious concerns. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm happy, you know, that um, to a large extent, uh, the Labour Party is um, beginning to see how they can, you know, look into their personal matter and um, try to see how they can also solve the issues, you know, um, around um, the Labour Party crisis, the leadership crisis. But a good thing that uh, the whole crisis, which is also witnessed in all the political parties, mm -hmm. you know, is not something that would stall their chances at the, you know, um, tribunals as well. It's not a major distraction, it's a mm -hmm. good one. But thank you so much, um, Kingsley Udall, for coming back. So maybe you can just wrap up on your line of thought before, you know, the uh, network distractions. Okay, just like I was saying, you know, uh, the simple economy start to play out. You know, when there is a uh, high demand, certainly the, the price will go up. You understand? And that is why the party, um, NWC, start and decide to tag for 25 million. And because P2B is man who demonstrates what he says, he's not the kind of person who, who speaks from both sides of his mouth. You know, he had to intervene and uh, 
ask the party leadership to reduce the cost of the fund. You know, most especially when one of them, one of the aspirants, uh, uh, purchased the form and uh, died the day after. You know, so they felt that uh, uh, as uh, a mark of uh, um, condolence for the family, for the disease and the family, you know, that the form, the money he paid, which was 25 million, should be refunded back to the family mm. of the disease who actually uh, bought uh, the nomination form prior before the, the death. Um, uh, is demise, uh, unfortunately, and uh, reduce the cost of the form from 25 million to 15 million. You understand? So he's actually preaching, uh, doing what he preach, he preaches. You understand? And that's the kind of person we want to have in the aim of affairs of this country that will help reduce the cost of uh, governance and reduce the cost of living. As you and I can attest, you know, life is quite difficult and. Uh, uh, very, very difficult. A lot of families find it very difficult to feed. You know, so, so, so somebody who aspires to lead his people to cop out such a, a open sum of uh, 25 million, that is very critical time, in just to purchase a nomination form. I think it's quite high. So, being a, a good leader, he is, he decided to step in into this and have a discussion with the party and see how that um, amount can be slashed to 15 million, which is quite uh, appreciable. That, that you know a lot of obedience will tell you um if you're looking at a situation where a lot of young people can cash in on the opportunity to aim at governance and uh you know gain political positions they'll tell you that uh 50 million is still too much won't it uh stall their chances you have mentioned the not too young to run bill and we know that election and politicking in nigeria is quite expensive so i think that the whole idea of lots of young people you know queuing behind the likes of peter obi was because of some of the tendencies that was displayed like going for via for vying for offices free of charge mm. so when we begin to pack prizes it doesn't stall the chances of these young people um it doesn't because there, there, are of, there are other offices they can actually aspire for. Like, for instance, um, councillor, local government chairman, um, state house of assembly, federal house of representative, and the senate. You understand? It's not necessarily you must go for um, a contest for the position of the governor. The are state. there no prizes we to the tickets of these positions? Are there no prizes to the tickets of these positions? That's what I'm telling you now. The price is not up to even 10 million. You understand? I will tell you that I will tell you that they would not really pay a price tag or nomination form for State House of Assembly and uh, House of Reps. You understand? Just like I said, those of who contested, most of them just paid little money or no money and got the party um, uh, ticket as it were. You know, but right now, as I said, no party has become a beautiful bride. And you know, it costs money to run the party. Like this matter in, in court, in tribunal, you know, we pay our, our lawyers to to appear in court. Mm -hmm. You because understand? And that, that was a question I was going to come to. Yeah, that was a question I was going to come to because most times, just to allay the concerns of people like the obedience now that are saying, oh, why are you now putting a price tag on your nominations? I know usually the conversation is with the exorbitant pricing on a nomination form, what exactly are these parties using the, the money to for. do? For instance, when we heard that a certain party was selling a form, indication of interest, at 100 million naira, how do people raise 100 million and what does the party do with 100 million naira cut across the number of persons that buy that particular form? So I like the fact that you're already delving into explaining what the generation of these funds via uh, nomination forms does for the party and i think it will help some of the obedience to lay rest to the fact that you are considering putting a price tag on nomination forms for each you know level of um interest yeah most of our most of our offices uh even our national secretary in abuja is a uh, is a rented building and of course you know how much it costs to rent uh, such a building in the heart of uh, abuja Kentucky. You know, so it cost actually cost money, and that money will not be coming from the national chairman's pocket. It's from this uh, money gotten from uh, nomination sales of the nomination funds that will actually use in uh, running that office, and uh, the cost of running the office too. You know, 
the daily runnings of the office via money, and uh, our legal team has to be put on uh, on the payroll. You know, so these are uh, ways where this money is uh, uh, being expended. So it's expected that uh, um, the obedience you understand that even you, as an individual running your home, it costs you money. You know, spoiling your car, going out every day, even your airtime, your data, and all of that, it costs you money. You understand? Not talk about party, you know. And uh, they should understand that uh, you must not go for the position of the government. You understand? You can aspire to be a member of the House, State House of Assembly, which the price is uh, quite uh, uh, legal compared to governorship, uh, uh, my price tag, uh, House of Reps, uh, senatorial uh, nomina uh, nomination forms are quite less compared to that 15 million we're talking about. You understand? So they can start from that. Okay. So um, le let me ask a, a little bit, let's delve a little away from the leadership crisis. We, we seem to have touched on that quite well. Let's talk about structure within the Labour Party. Now, when the Labour Party came together, it was clamored, oh, a structureless party. They can never, you know, vie for the seat of the presidency and win. But we actually saw the kind of energy that Labour Party pulled at the polls. That narrative, a lot of people have changed. But let us talk about the aftermath of the election, putting aside whether you are satisfied with the results or not. Going forward, what is the Labour Party doing to ensure that its structure will stand firmer and stand the test of time? Other elections are still going to come you know, going forward, how what how strong do we expect that the Labour Party is going to be going forward? The Labour Party was never seen coming. You know, when we went around the country conversing for for votes, for support from of uh, the Nigerian populace electorate. You know, the other two parties felt we were just on a jamboree, you know, but uh, when the wave came, most of them, most of them who are 12 years, 16 years in National Assembly lost their ticket, you understand, to the Labour Party candidates. So, and uh, they never saw it coming. Today, that structureless party has produced a governor in Abia State, it has produced eight senators, it has produced 35, if not 36, uh, federal House of Representatives legislative members, it has produced almost 70 state House of Assembly members, you know, and uh, more to come, you know, like uh, a mandate in Enugu State will be reclaimed very soon, you know, and uh, um, these three other elections that are coming up, uh, what they call off-season elections in Bayasa, Imo, and uh, in Kogi State. Sure, we're going to take those, uh, those states and add to our structure. You know, we have our structure based from uh, the unit to the world level. But what the Labour Party does not have is uh, this structure of criminality. Just like my principal will always say, you know, the structure of criminality uh, which is coming to dismantle. You know, like most of us were in our various village units, I was in a quiet home, I was in the of my, my home, my local government, and I saw all that played out. You know, where there were, there were financial inducements, you know, to, even when there were financial cr crunch crunches at that period, you know, we saw what played out, where people go to vote and go to pen their name somewhere in the register, you know, indicating that they voted for their party and all of that, and later were given money. You know, we understand all the data, you know, and uh, our principal does not believe in things like that. He believes if I must win, you know, let me win fair and square. You know, let it be the people decide to support me. The electorate decide to support me with their mandate, with, uh, with their votes and give me the mandate. That's like he said. He said, before you can answer the name, His Excellency, mm -hmm. the process mm -hmm. that brought you into office must be excellent. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, okay. I want to say that uh, we have structures and our structures are well written.
but we don't have that structure of criminality. I okay. don't think we want to do that. Okay, um, our time is up. Uh, I must say a very big thank you to you. But let me just remind you very quickly. I'm happy that you have said that, you know, you do not have the structure of criminality in the Labour Party. But then again, a lot of people rode on the integrity of the man Peter Obi to be where they are right now in terms of political offices across the uh, uh, country under the Labour Party. So Nigerians will be watching to find out how these people that have been elected, I'm happy you've mentioned a whole lot of numbers that, you know, have formed the structure that Labour Party has today. But Nigerians will be watching to find out how these people, men and women, will be faring on the lines of integrity as well. But let me say a very big thank you to you, um, Obong Engineer, Honorable Udo Kingsley Akman, MNSE, member national mobilization directorate labor party and member inter-party affairs committee obidati presidential campaign council thank you so much it's been a wonderful time having you on set with us this morning do have a great day all right thank you appreciate it all right and that's right. where uh we tend to draw the curtains but i'm t uh, sh definitely very interesting conversations very interesting that conversations. uh labor party is now structured mm -hmm. and it, not structureless structured anyway. they do not have the structure of criminality, criminality. um it, it's good to see that like um kingsley said they are not unwavered with the things that are happening they are still you know on focused track. yeah on where they are headed that's important because the labor party is a party that most nigerians are looking out for if the judiciary is the last hope of the common man and uh, most nigerians now believe that the labor party is the last hope of democracy mm. in the country but that's about <laughs> the conversation we can have this morning it's been a swell time thank you for being a part of rise and shine my name is Uyai Anyekan. Yeah, my name is Janice Cobham. Don't forget today, the 25th of April every year has been celebrated globally as World Malaria Day. And trust us, we'll be bringing that conversation to you tomorrow when we come back again for another interesting edition of Rise and Shine Daily. Have a great day and do enjoy the rest of our programs. We'll leave you with Spot Central, Blyden Ukem and Isaac Isaac coming up next. Thank you.